Hi, this is Mike Leahy at BookUp. Today we're going to take a look at an ebook called The Open Game 2 by Fide Master Chuck Shulian. I'll be using the free version of Chess Openings Wizard called Chess Openings Wizard Lite. And when that program comes up, I'll click on Open an eBook. There we are, The Open Game 2. Double click on that one. Once the eBook is opened up, I can see that there's only one candidate in the starting position of chess, which is E4. This entire eBook is how to play black against one e4. Now my number one question here is, is this ebook only going to show me master moves or will it also address the moves that beginners are likely to play against me? Let's find out in the next four minutes. First, what can we learn? The author says that chess positions can be categorized as open, semi-open, and closed. And when we're talking about openings, e4, e5, double king pawn, these are the open games. And the open games, as the author says here, generate positions which feature rapid development, usually an early central skirmish, often a variety of attacks and counterattacks, and also exciting tactics, which make the system of play an excellent way to learn the game. But this kind of system also offers chances for the stronger player to show his or her superiority. If I scroll down, I can find out who played it and why and where they played it, how successful they were with it. But let's just click through the moves and learn a little bit more here. E4. He shows knight f6 to show you some alternatives, but he's always recommending e5. Here, the most common move is knight f3, but he also has answers to f4, the, the uh, king's gambit, and bishop c4, the bishop's opening, d4, early knight c3. Here's a move you'll never see a grandmaster play. Queen h5. Let's scroll down and see what he has to say about that first. Queen h5. The queen's attack. A favorite of novices. Basically, they're trying to play bishop c4 and then take on f7 checkmate. But black has nothing to fear. Like he says here, if you just learn to defend without misplacing your own queen as black. This book is from black's point of view, so I'm going to right-click on this diagram and uncheck where it says white at bottom. So it goes to black at bottom. Now let's take a look at what happens after queen h5, a move that grandmasters would never play. Here, you could play knight f6, but he's going to take the pawn on e5 and it gets complicated. And he actually gives that as a line if you want to check it out. So here again, he shows you some inferior lines and explains what happens. But his number one recommendation is knight c6. You'll notice in a repertoire book, the top recommendation is usually the top candidate move, knight c6. Bishop c4, and white is threatening the scholar's mate. So what do you do? Now, we talked earlier about getting everything developed without actually screwing up with your queen. So it looks like the one move here is to move the queen to e7 to hang on to that pawn on f7 so you don't get checkmated. Here he's recommending a better answer, though, which also gets everything developed without getting your pieces in a twist. g6. Usually here, white will try to still hit on f7 by dropping the queen back to f3, still threatening checkmate, but you can just play knight f6, developing your pieces. And here's his last recommendation. So black has a comfortable game, he says. His development will be smooth, you'll be able to play bishop g7, and then castles, and then you've got d6, and other possibilities to play bishop e6. Here's what to watch out for, and so on. Let's go back and see what the main lines look like. I'll press the rewind button to go back to the starting position. Remember earlier when I said the topmost candidate is always the best or recommended candidate for both sides? Why don't we just click through the top lines and get an idea of what he's recommending for black. So after e4, e5, knight f3 is the most common move. He's recommending knight c6. Bishop g5, the Roy Lopez is the way to go. So after knight f6, Knight c3 transposes into the four knights game. Castle's a little bit more testing if white's going to play that. Let's say he plays the knight c3 lines. So he recommends bishop b4. He shows knight d4 is equally good, but at least to a quick draw after all the knights are exchanged. Let's take a look at that side variation. What does it look like to force all the exchanges of knights? Knight d4, generally white's going to take, take back. White will usually play e5. Then we'll take the knight on c3. He'll take the knight on f6. And here you go, a fairly drawish position. Let's go back to the last branch point and look at what he really recommended, which is bishop b4. 
So, so far we've looked at maybe 35, 45 positions, and we know a little bit about the open game, at least what Chuck Schulian's recommending for the black side. But out of those 35 or 45 positions, how much is there to read in this ebook? Let's go to the help menu and select about this ebook. So of the 35 or 45 positions, there are actually 23,000 positions. Now, not all of them are annotated as well as these opening positions, which need a lot of explanation, but there are 23,000 unique positions in this ebook to learn. I would say that if you learn just two or three thousand of those 23,000 positions, you probably know more about the open game than 98% of the opponents you will ever play. And it's easy enough to learn. So again, the program we're looking at right now is free. Go to chessopeningssoftware.com, sign up and go to the downloads area and grab it. The ebook we're looking at is The Open Game 2 by Chuck Shulian, which I believe is $29. Thanks for watching.